What's up, MFers? Welcome to the 2024 Bassmaster Elite Series. They said he couldn't do it, and that just made him want to do it more. The next big thing, Ben Milliken! It seems like we just got done with the opens. It freaking, I mean, it seems like it was four years ago, and it seems like it was four days ago that we got off the road at the Harris Chain, qualified, boom. We had the off season, pretty much just worked my ass off trying to get freaking content, trying to get stuff lined up with places to stay, with the boat, with the wrap, with the tackle, with the sponsors, with everything else we're trying to get to make this year very, very special, make sure everything's in line with all them controllables so we can uh, just have to worry about the uncontrollables and kind of move on through there. But me, Coleslaw, the three pooches are rolling east to Toledo Bend, right back behind us. And the other car, we got Rebecca, we got Osborne, and we got little Myra. Whole crew's making the trip. And uh, man, we're excited. We're staying right on Toledo Bend. We got a beautiful place that a fan reached out to uh, let us stay so kindly at their residence. What better place to start the season than where we got the win at the Open last year at Toledo Bend. Although it is obviously um, a very different time of the year. It is the pre-spawn, late winter pre-spawn into the almost spawn phase potentially as this tournament kind of progresses with the moon that's coming in. But um, we'll talk a little bit more about the fishing once we get there. I'm gonna sit on the boat. We're gonna do things a little bit like we did last year where we kind of do a practice type segment, try to make it more educational, give a good snapshot of what I'm trying to do with breaking down this body of water, this massive 200,000 acre body of water. Uh, and then we'll get into the tournament videos as we get a little bit further on. It's only a three day practice, thank God. The five days of practice in the open, it was something where you had FOMO if you didn't go the entire time. But at the same time, man, five days is a long time and we didn't want to have you know, five tournament practice videos because it gets a little repetitive and I'm trying to find fish, not talk the whole time. What I'm trying to say is a little bit different this year, but you guys seem to love the, the format we used last year. And so we're going to carry a lot of what you guys liked and, and try to tweak it a little bit to make it better. But we're not that far out. We just went over Rayburn. We're 45 minutes away from old Toledo Bend where we're staying. And uh, once we get there, get get settled in, we're going to hop out in the boat and uh, let's talk about what we're going to tie on for this fishery. I'm pumped. All right, we're checked in. We uh, we got all settled in. We met the whole fam that uh, it's so nice to reach out to us, this beautiful place. Cole probably got some good shots of the sunset, everything right back behind us. And the cool thing is we're only like four minutes from the uh, tournament launch, which is crazy. Right. That probably doesn't mean much looking at this, but... When you look at Toledo Bend on a map, you can be like this far on the map and it's like a 20 minute drive because the lake's enormous. I don't know how many miles top to bottom it is. It's gotta be close to like 80 miles maybe. Place is absolutely huge. Some places of the lake, 15, 10 miles across towards the lower end. It's like an ocean out there. Today when we drove over the bridge to come out here, wind was blowing like 20 miles an hour and it looked not fun to be out there. And as you can tell by what I'm wearing right now, it's cold today too. Um, it's a lot different than it's about to be. It's 40 degrees right now, windy, going to be down to 30 tonight, going to be low 30s again tomorrow night, but then things are going to start heating up more and more. As we get into the week, just to kind of talk about the conditions of how things are going to kind of progress, temperatures in the 80s or, or near 80 degrees every single day, and so it's going to be a huge transitional tournament. Now, I don't like that because I like to catch them out off the bank. I like to catch them offshore. But the good thing about it is Toledo Bend is massive. And the lower end is deep and it's clean, uh, cleaner. And so when the fish are down in 20, 30, 40 feet, they don't necessarily know that the water temperature heated up 10 degrees on the bank when it's 16 miles away to the bank. So... That's a good thing. So they're not going to completely just, you know, every fish in the lake is going to be in two feet of water. That's not really how it works. But we got a moon coming in, a full moon coming in, I think, on Sunday, maybe even sooner than that, um, in the next week. And so that's going to, you know, that, that pull, the, the gravitational pull of the moon makes those fish want to go up to the bank no matter what time of year it is. It seems like the around the full moon, on the full moon, a couple days, it's going to be a time when the fish get a little bit funky acting and a little shower so something we're going to, have to deal with in this tournament but just kind of talking about how it's going to break down um i think i you know i had several people send me the fantasy fishing 
percentages and all that of who people picked. And I think more, I have over twice as much percentage of people that picked me than the second most person that got picked, which is absolutely mind blowing. And I think what people don't really understand is that I think the majority of the field has fished Toledo Bend more than I have personally. I will tell you that straight up. I've been here like now 10 days of my life. It was last year for the tournament, last year in practice, and now like two days of pre-practicing. I have barely spent any time on this lake. Now, I do love that it's Florida strain bass. It's Texas fishing, and I love how it lays out because you can catch them on a big bait. You can catch them on, you know, way out offshore and drains on fish on bait. You can catch them in standing timber. I love to fish those types of ways, and you can catch them, you know, off score, off shoals, off, off score shoals is how you can catch them too, offshore schools, um, even though that might not be what's really happening right now. So the big thing with my tournament win last year here was it was all post-spawn fish, I think, almost all post-spawn fish, and they were on that, that gizzard shad spawn on some hard points on the way out of those spawning pockets. Well, they're going the other direction now. They're going into these spawning pockets, or at least they're starting to think about it with the warming temperatures, moon coming in, all that stuff. You can see my breath right now. It's kind of crazy that we're, we're talking about spawning. These fish that are on their way in have a different mindset than when they're on their way out. So when they're on their way in, don't get me wrong, big bass are always going to be around and love to eat gizzard shad. But on the way in and in the winter time period, they've spent a lot of time targeting those big balls of thread fin shad. It's an easier target for them. Those thread fins die off or really struggle when the water gets really cold. Easy pickings for them. They've been loading up. If you guys watched the MLF event that was here a couple weeks ago, that's how all the top 10 guys caught them was out offshore, way offshore. Some guys in 40, 50 feet even catch them on little Demiki rig style, you know, Jake Head Minnow presentations on forward facing. Some of that could still be going down. I'm going to look for that, of course, because when I pre-practice here for a couple days, which was like a week or two before their tournament, that was such an easy way to catch them. They were just out there. They were gorging themselves. And even though it didn't look like they were very big on the screen, everyone you caught, it seemed like, was three to four and a half pounds. And you could catch 20 pounds in 20 minutes if you wanted to. Maybe not even that. That uh, kind of leads me to the next point, which is going to be this tournament could be a record-breaking tournament for weights. I don't know about the all-time record, which is 140 or something pounds at Falcon Lake way back uh, when it was cracking off. But you're going to see things, I think, from a total weight standpoint that you haven't seen in a long time in a Bassmaster event. Could be into the 120s, potentially, if everything went perfectly right. If someone really gets on a consistent group of fish, but at the very least, I think if you don't got 20 pounds in your live well, you about want to dump them at the ramp, like we used to say when we'd fish the little local jackpots. Of course, we're fishing for points and stuff now, so we ain't going to freaking dump a 19-pound stringer at the dock on day one if we get that, if we're fortunate enough. But to be competitive in this event and make it into day four, which is the top 10 anglers, I think you're probably going to need somewhere in the range of 60 five to 70 pounds to make that top 10 maybe even higher than that um it's gonna be crazy maybe closer to 70 to 75 so that's a lot of weight you guys add that up. that's uh, we need to be averaging and looking for four plus four and a half plus pound fish in practice that's how we know we're on the right stuff and like i said transitional tournament we need to make sure that we are not fishing behind them to where we're just getting a glimpse in practice and getting ideas of where the fish are leaving instead we need to find areas where they're going to be staging and moving up so in order to do that i did what i always did when i tied baits on here for practice and i've i've tied the smorgasbord i've freaking the the folks that host us here were like is, how many rods do you got i'm like 62 million rods out and on the deck and the reason for that is i carry a lot of a lot of rods and a lot of tackle in practice because i want to do as many different things as possible to see if i can dial it in i'm not the type of guy that's like well, give me my frog, my swim jig, and uh, my, my football jig, and I'll go figure out the lake. That is not me. You guys know that from watching my videos. So we got, you know, we got some crankbaits here for fishing some of these offshore fish. This is kind of like my bottom bait side. We got a 300 DD and a 500 DD from Six Cents. I want you to take notice, you know, I don't tie on like the, the B and C baits when I go out to... Uh, do some fishing. These some bitches got teeth marks on them. When I reach for the ones in the box, I want the ones that have caught them before. 
Um, so those are great. You know, I can cover everything from eight to 25 feet with these two baits right here. If they want a slower bottom bait, you know, I got a couple free rigs tied up. I got a seven inch shaky worm. I got a six, three shaky worm and I could not come here. I literally couldn't bring myself to come here without tying on the bait that did the majority of my damage besides the glide last year to win the hog walla on a big old Carolina rig. Cause I can fish this around, you know, the grass edges, points, hard bottom type stuff and get a good idea if uh, any fish are around. Cause it's such a bitey bait. That's the best bait I've ever thrown on a Carolina rig, bar none, without question. So that's for that. If I'm throwing this guy, it's, it's not that it's not a good bait, but I'm gonna be throwing it in five feet of water, maybe seven feet of water or less. That's the whale on a little flashy swimmer. If you see me up there doing that, then I probably am not in a very good place mentally, emotionally, physically, and all other different types of adverbs that end in L-Y because I'm not gonna try to win this event in four feet of water. I promise you that unless it's 100 yards off the bank on a hard spot that's loaded with bass. Now, that's kind of like my bottom bait situation. And so I got a bunch of strolling baits on up there, a drop shot and stuff too. That stuff's not very exciting. You guys have been telling me that the last, you know, three weeks of videos or three months of videos, I guess. These are some of my suspended bait, um, suspended fish baits that I got tied on. The fish are sitting a little bit higher in the water column or, you know, even up shallower. I'm going to freaking throw this damn six cents provoke 97 size deep diver, regular diver, 97 X, 97 DD. That's gonna be the bait that I wanna target fish up shallow with for the most part, because these fish will eat a jerk bait, especially early in the day when the water's still cold, when the conditions are a little tough, or with the moon coming in, they get little tiny bite windows a lot of times. The bigger the moon, the smaller the bite window I found. It can be really good during that time, but the smaller the bite window, and the rest of the day, you gotta freaking finesse them. Well, what's more finessey than putting a bait that stops in their face? Doesn't matter how shallow they get. I can catch fish in two feet of water on this jerk baits. I can catch fish in 40 feet of water on the jerk baits. So I can't go anywhere without that tied on. And then we're not going to go anywhere without the, uh, without the hangover tied on this season. It's going to be in my box or on my deck, tied up, rigged, ready to go at all times. I think this is, that's a fast sink version. I can tell by the weight system in it, but this is going to be a bait that we fish for suspended fish that are out in 10 plus feet of water probably um, or fish that are hopefully we find some fish grouped up on the bottom and of course I have a couple glides um, tied on as well but I don't think I just don't have the feeling the big bait's going to play but I'm not going to go anywhere this year without trying it I just don't feel like it is the water's not very warm right now I just don't think it's going to for some reason but I'm gonna leave my mind open I'm gonna have all these baits tied up and ready to go and we're gonna go try to break this place down like I said it's unfathomably big looking at a map of Toledo Bend some of these creeks, these major creek arms are eight miles long. Like they're bigger than anything that I grew up fishing in one creek arm. It's absolutely bonkers. And you could literally spend your entire three days of practice for this event breaking down one of those arms. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And so I need to be vigilant and in a good mental place to where I'm not trying to break down the entire lake. You kind of got to walk that line of keeping an open mind and wanting to see all these places and not being like, it's going to be one in that creek. It's going to be one in that part of the lake. But at the same time, you have to realize like, I need to pick an area within 10 miles and try to figure out that part because I cannot break down 200,000 acres in three days of practice. And another thing I need to get my mind right on is we're in the fucking Elite Series. This is crazy, guys. Uh, I just got gas and talked to Hank Cherry and Jeff Gustafson. Bryant Smith just came and dropped stuff off. We're driving by the Johnstons, and we're driving by, you know, Tyler Williams, my buddy, that freaking just qualified in the Opens, and, and John Garrett and Logan Parks and all these dudes. Like, man, it's crazy. We are here. It, it went so fast. This offseason was crazy fast, but now we're competing against the best in the world. And, uh, man absolutely nuts i can't believe we're here just gotta keep my head in a spot where i'm just like you know it's just fishing you just gotta catch them the same as always and i'll be completely straight up with you guys the hardest part of this has already been behind me i'm ready to have fun now like i'm all my gears dialed in all my tackles dialed in and all my presentations are dialed in we just gotta go find them now because uh nothing's gonna stop the train i'm gonna freaking catch them uh and i'm excited and i'm so grateful for the opportunity I'm grateful for the companies that are behind me, you know, all these Six Sense products, everything they do for me. Waterland sunglasses, man, these things are gonna come in freaking, they're, they're not up here, they used to be up here. They're gonna come in absolutely freaking key this week, especially 
as we're getting the next week at fork when the fish really could be moving up shallow and just everyone else man we got the freaking the sea brakes back there we got the powerhouse lithium batteries so i don't got to worry about any bullshit happening on the water they're going to last all freaking day long we got the best graph system that I could possibly put together with these birds. You know, we got the best harness system that, that's running all these things with, with, with all that. Like, God, it's freaking crazy that, um, that we have the, all this, these things going for us. And, of course, I'm sitting in the most badass rig as many of these pros that are with Bass Cat and not with Bass Cat have been telling me that I picked the perfect company to work with and the perfect boat. And I couldn't agree with them more. So... We got everything, plus, of course, we got the best guy behind the lens in the damn game. What the hell could go wrong, right? We're going to crush them, and it's going to be a hell of a good time. And uh, if, we, if we don't, then, then we're going we're gonna to have a damn good time doing it because we fucking made it. And I don't got any, anything to prove to anybody at this point. We did all that last year. It's time to go have some damn fun, guys. So first thing in the morning, we're going to get up super early. It's going to be dark 30 when we get up and, and get on the water because I got a place that um, – a place or two that I know gets right early in the morning, and I want to go check that out. And especially with the cold front, they could be uh, loaded up and ready to chew. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the morning. So as we try to break down this massive fishery, um, we need all the tools that we can use and every one of these guys has like every mapping app that you can possibly get but i got a little sneak that uh i've been using i'm going to be using it in the future and i've used it in the past but they actually just added some amazing new features it's the deep dive app and they keep talking about how the wind is going to be really bad uh first day of the tournament so i don't know if it's going to get canceled or not but if not they actually have this new thing it's a wind effects map and it shows real time what direction the wind is going to be blasting into each place uh, on the lake. Uh, you can see as far as seven days in advance what the wind is going to do. And it's pretty cool. You can see exactly like this is a west wind. You can see the direction it's pointing. You can see which banks are going to be getting hit directly by that wind. They also threw in this new thing. It's a water clarity estimate, uh, the most up-to-date water clarity estimates for each part of the lake. A lot of people need that, obviously, for fishing places that get a lot of inflow. And then speaking of there's an inflow map showing exactly where all the uh, the inflows will be, which not only is that good to figure out, you know, where stuff's gonna get muddied up, but a lot of times those inflows can be places that you get bit that can be really good places to catch them. I'll put a link to this deep dive app right down below in the description. You can get it at the App Store, the, uh, the Google Play, everything. It's all available, their website, download it, check it out. And uh, it's a really, just another tool that's really gonna help me this year. Good morning, MFers. Welcome on out. First day of practice out here on Toledo. We're blessed this morning with one of the best things of the sport of bass fishing, which is a 500 boat high school tournament. <laughs> uh, so I can already see the spot. I wanted to kind of sneak in early in the morning and check out. It has like 62 boats sitting on it. So uh, I guess we'll kind of just have to be a little vigilant about where people see us at today and what we check out. A lot of what goes down today is going to be different than what goes down in five days. So not trying to find where we're going to be fishing necessarily when the tournament starts. More so trying to figure out where they're at now and go from there, obviously. Good thing about a big lake like Toledo, especially this time of year, you can follow those fish trends transitions from one part of a creek right onto the next structure right on the next structure so that's the goal today check out some higher percentage stuff that um, I think could be really good and uh, see how many elite boats are on it and see how many fish are still on it so should be pretty fun this morning it's cold coldest it's gonna be 35 degrees this morning right now but as I was saying last night by the time we get to tournament time it's gonna be 70s and maybe even into the 80s so definitely gonna warm up a lot time to have some damn fun all right cole did becky show you how there was no forks last night so there's like the silverware drawer you pull out there's like five open slots all spoons to the top in every one of them and we're like huh all right well we don't got forks i go and move some on the counter there's a fucking basket. It's full of forks. I don't know if it's like a cultural difference or what the hell the deal is. I've never seen anything like it.
Cole, you want a seat. Oof, there's my, there's my knot. The knot held up, it just, I think this line cuts that uh, flora. And then you're like this, Cole, you're like, oh no, my guide bent. Just kidding, it's a recoil. Can't even freaking get my fingers to dig that out. Hate having cold fingers. Those are big. I'm getting really, really good at losing them on this thing, Cole. Look at all them fuckers, Cole. Big school of them. Nothing crazy, but there was like three bigger ones with him. And of course the little peckerhead gets it on the grass edge out here. I'll keep on moving. Got one on. No wonder he fought so stupid. The old suspended drum. Wow. Wow. Small spot. A little spotty. That's ah, because it's a hump. Score tracker update. Ben Milliken just jumped into 101st with a 1.6. Got him. Jeez, this is one of the smallest ones I've seen. Oh, we were going to stop right there and fish anyway. <laughs> what do you can do? High school tournaments, am I right? Three and a half, getting closer. Begging. Two of them right there like that too. Three of them, one out there too. Look at that one out there, it's twice the size of this one. Oh, where's the boats at? <laughs> well, it's not much of a secret. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Wish there was a couple more boats out here today. That's what, uh, that's what we heard. No kidding? Yeah, they're definitely out here. Yeah. Yeah, it's busy, man. Um, in the trees more so out. Kind of like in the areas like the secondary points and stuff on the way into the spawning pockets. Yeah, yep. Any of these points here coming into like this main spawning bay, I think there's too many people back fishing the bank back there. They aren't back there yet. Wanted at that time. Is it not? It's a catfish, I think. Drum. <laughs> uh, I thought he was a little bit weird. <sighs> Just uh, no wonder he missed it. He's like blind, dying, skinny. 
Suspended drum strolling, they call this. Goodbye. He's like, Duh. I'm gonna go back to the inevitable end of my life. Have a good day. I'm a drum. I think that's what he was saying. Oh, Ben. He's still on it. I think it might be a drum the way he looks. Drag's too loose, I know that. <laughs> well, I know what the drum look like on scope now, at least. Daddy's back. Daddy's back. How are we on boats? the right some bitch too right there cool so fat there's like four of those guys in there I mean, that's probably three pound fish almost <sighs> heavy we'll provoke same hard one of the same hard points this spot right here is where i qualified for the classic i knew i qualified anyways not that it's one spot i won on or anything here but it was the one of 20 some spots that i fished it's a very safe spot with more numbers than size and cool that they get there beforehand too. Check some deeper grass edges and stuff like that this morning. And now I'm kind of just working my way around trying to find some, uh, see if they're on some of these hard points leading into some of these spawn pockets. So far we pulled up to one and they're pretty, pretty good on this one. I should probably get out of here. It's all hard bottom right here. You can really see it on, huh? perspective let me zip it in a little bit you can see that hard chunky bottom and that's because look look out there guys we got what se seven eight miles and that wind can just blast against this it erodes 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 and then you got bait mixed in you got bass mixed in out there as i pan around you can see some of the bait probably got blown in here or i don't think bait can really get blown but it follows the sediment or whatever it likes to eat and um anytime you can find that man it's pretty safe that there's going to be some bass like that one there at 60 feet. Look at the left of that. Yeah, I just missed it. Look at those jokers. Pot's loaded. This spot too, man. We got cold water lead into a big spawning pocket. Like There's just going to be more coming even when these leave. These are f***ing moving. I cannot stay on them. Speaking of on them. Oh, here we go, Cole. There's like four of them there that size. Not that he's big. Just looked like nothing on the screen. Not very big actually, I didn't see him, but a lot smaller than most of was on there. Right under this ball of bait too. Hanging out on the stump. Heavy. Heavy boy. Fit just could not be in a worse spot for every single fish.
there's got to be some like adjacent in some of this timber. This whole thing has timber lining it. They got to be able to just slide up into that. Small. That's scorable. Dude, I did it again. I thought I woke up today and I was never going to catch a bass the rest of my life. Whew, another day down, Cole. We're back in it. This guy knows. How's it going? I need one of them hats. It's cold out here. That was the first one. Good luck. Let's go. big I'll make a turn wow I thought he was a lot bigger than that we're gonna keep moving we're back here now that's why I think this will hold up because he's can just sit out here and gorge themselves until they go bed. White. That's a, a resident fish. Heavier one. White body, black lips. Got some lipstick on, Cole. Man, that's crazy how freaking, how there's this much bait back here. It must be because the water came up and they want to be in the, where the food eat. You know, the water's 52 back here. Got that little baby jerk bait out. Tell me one of them big some bitches on them stumps wouldn't eat that. You can't go back any further than this. It's stupid. <laughs> I'm getting too close to the bank, Cole. I'm getting itchy. Ugh. Get me out of here. Like a snake's gonna fall out of a tree on me or something Jesus looks like fucking tiny down there three and a half probably maybe bigger Catfish. Thought he looked big. Decent one. Just out here looking for fish on bait. Mouth of a creek. Little juggle minnow. Four pounder. Four plus. Not really freaking on bait, just cruising. Oh. I think it is a catfish. <laughs> it is. Think he's spinning. He's spinning. We're doing cat spins. Did we catch ourselves a tree cat? We got a tree cat, Cole. He's all spiraled. Dude, that's, that's maximum line semen right there. It's tough to beat that. This bass fishing stuff's cool, but you can't beat some line semen. Don't anybody tell Lee that I threw this back. He will be livid. Livid sea. Livid sea that we didn't do a fish fry. For all you guys, I know there's going to be 87 comments. I'll be getting messages for three months about what jig head this is and where do you buy them. I made it. I know. It's weird. That son bitch was suspended in a tree in 35 feet of water. And now we got breakfast. Just kidding. That would be not ideal. <laughs> What's this stuff called? Uh that makes you be able to see your bait better. Bait pop. 
got my bait pop on now. Yep. Do you think bass would like this? I mean, it probably makes it not smell or feel like plastisol anymore. It's more like a stinky little shad now. Guess we're about to find out. Stinky little cat. Stinky little cat. No one is a fan of a stinky cat. No, you don't want a stinky kitty. Gotta run from that. God. There was one way bigger than that right by him too. Thank you for not thrashing for two seconds right there, bud. These hooks are so dangerous. Thanks, cool. All right, I'm gonna dump him quick if I can get the hook out. Just a little staged guy on a tree. It's a better one. It's a bass. Any guys? Jumping Tim, huh? This guy, definitely a pre-spawn female. Tiny mouth, look at that. Not much Florida in her. Jiggle juggle. It's a cool little area. She's probably a five, wasn't she? Close to it. I'd say so. I didn't think you were gonna flip it. Yeah. There's was a couple right there that size. She actually might have been smaller. I kind of just stopped right here because the creek channel's all fucky. I haven't seen any damn bait. They're just kind of off the sides of the creek channel in the timber swimming around. So I'm sure they're just waiting. Loon. He's like, what? Was that bait? something jump I think those things are pretty smart actually some birds not so much those things seem like maybe I just want them to be smart because they're good at finding bait fish for me the right bait fish like yeah they're cool and then shitting birds are like all they do is poop they're the dumbest birds in the world they must lack all intelligence pretty clean back here actually they want to be in timber still really bad every time you get out of it it's like nothing whether it's here or yesterday when they were on them points i definitely want to be swimming through that timber because now there ain't any timber it's the same exact shit and there's no fish same with in the creek over there. The better quality ones out there, super deep even, where we finished up in the mouth of that, there was deep timber. Toledo Bend, find the trees, find the bass. Good, huh? I should have my Bubba scale out testing it, cool. Testing it to make sure that it scales. Woo, that's a big one. Got one. Four pounder. Slurp. Close to five, maybe. Four and a half. Another one of them small mouth dudes. We got drummed. Dude, there's like hundreds of these right here. Beautiful fish, cool colors. Might not even be one we need. Four and a half, four and a quarter. That's a begging. I'm not even kidding. He's in a damn tree though. He 
He ate it and he was going the other way. Might be a damn drum or something. No, it's not. He's about to be in another damn tree. Jumping drum. One of them drum jumps. I'm probably not gonna get her in, really. Too mean. Wallering. It's a pretty big fish, huh? Ah. I thought it was like seven. No. Frickin' didn't even see her come get my bait. She just had it and swimming away with it. Oh, she's pretty fat, huh? We'll save her for the derm. That's not a 10. That's just an eight. <laughs> she was never coming unhooked, I do know that. Tournament mode. Eight, seven. It's good. Get back. Probably this guy out. Well, that was pretty random, just on a damn tree. But it's pretty clear this grass and tree line's got some damn gigantors on it. And it's clear he saw me catch that one, but that doesn't really matter because, like I said, I've seen one. Just gotta find 20 of those in four days, Cole. This knot is old. It's from back when I knew how to tie knots. That's the thing with knots. The older they are, the stronger they get. Here we go. Here we go again. Should I catch him? He just was swimming away with it. <laughs> oh, I really thought he was gonna come off when he did that. There you go. <laughs> Six, five and a half. Dude, they are right every single spot on this little, little break here. Right where it should be. This is a big spot. Not a big spot, but pretty fat little spotted bass guy. Thought he looked a little bit different on there. Ooh, another one out there. They probably eat a damn worm of some type in their griddle. Or a jerk bait. Oh, yeah, it's a big one. That's a pretty big fish, Cole. It's a smallie. How far? Ah, I can't see as he's turned away. His hair's too nice. He's got too good a hair. You and him both need to show the goose sponsor. Hold on. Trying to pick my damn backlash out. Oh, look at that school of them out there. <laughs> Hit the brakes, I saw a jump. Don't jump, buddy. All right, 97 DD Provoke. Fish are just showing up like crazy. It's almost to the point where it doesn't seem like these four and a half to five pound fish are gonna do much for us, but surely they will. It's been the deal. That's the same bait I've been messing with too. Probably retie my knot at some point. Ah, screw it. That's 
I think it's a catfish. What'd you do here? <laughs> Too big. Cut it. I don't think it's a bass. Stop fighting. It's a bass. How many? F I was just telling Cole this. I can't stop catching these damn four and a half pounders. What? Oh, it's an eagle bud. Here, I'll cut this one's head off for him. I mean, that's probably like the average of four, four ish pounders we've caught, right? We've caught a bunch of these. Like 12? Dude, you were so far off. 5 1. Well, that's cool. That means we've caught 30 today for sure with that one big one. I pulled it away from two freaking seven to nine pounders that would have ate. So, might just be an event. They're moving around so much where you just cover water with the scope down and see what the hell you can put it in front of. But I don't think there was any way that one was going to bite because freaking was underneath the boat damn near by the time I got a bait to him. There's just so many fish in this 200,000 acre lake that they're not super, super smart and pressured. And now there's a beautiful eagle out there flying around as the sun's shining on him over the, the hill there, Cole. <whistles> yeah, bat. It's a bass, I think. Drop my damn jugular. Ah, I can feel his tail. Tail kicking is either giant bass or catfish, but I think it's cat because now he's all freaking weight. Yep. Dang it. Got me excited. I knew he looked funky on the screen. Screen funk. Pretty good one. If you're into that kind of thing. That was a good dive. Smooth entry. It's all bait. This is where it's not bait too. I'm trying to, I just saw one blasting away that was pretty big up on the surface. But yeah, this whole channel, the mouth of this creek is loaded. Not even the mouth, just as far as I've seen. Little group of bass right there. These should bite, Cole. They're out they mind. If I can get it to them. And they turned. Look at those coming in. Looks like video games and easy. It is not easy to put it in front of these moving dudes and get them to bite. One of those should. There he's on it. Touched it. Drop it to this guy. Oh my God, he followed it down. And back up. I can't jiggle my juggle any faster. My wrist is gonna explode. God, that got me excited I found a good one when I caught that catfish. The further they are from the bait, the tougher they are to catch, but the more likely they are to bite. Did that make sense? Unless they go the opposite direction when your bait hits right above their face. Oh, look up, turn around, do something. Do something different. Is that one guy or multiple guy? Two guys, not big. Pretty stacked in here, Cole. Jerry Stackhouse. What are these guys doing up here? I'm gonna catch those with this fast faller. Unless I do. Sight. 
psych. I think it's a catfish. God dang it, dude. Kidding me? Why? Why? No wonder they were up by the surface. They don't even know where to look for bait. It's right below you, bud. Andy freaking killed my cricket. If you don't catch any catfish, I can keep a damn juggle on there for freaking 18 bass. This is all it is, is just ghost minnow color juggle. It's a pretty small hook. This is a one-aught Gamakatsu 604. So I bite a little bit off. And it's just got a shitty little keeper that I've molded in it. I didn't even put a good keeper on it. And then I just totally didn't make it straight. There you go. Damn fish catcher. That one's looking for bait at least. Could be a bass. Kind of acted like a catfish. Is that a bass? It is. That's a show enough, Cole. Show enough. Oh. Hopefully they let us fish for 14 hours in the derb. Woo! Woo hoo hoo! Come and get yourself some jugular, bud! I was like, he turned pretty fast. For a kitten cat. Oh yeah, bud. Show enough. Cool, take a picture of me. I want to send it to Osborne. Night's winding down. Found a new area that's got him. Got him good. Like I said, six and three quarters. We ain't gonna be out here fishing this time of night. <sighs> Hold on. Seven pounder. Seven younds, zero ounce behemoth. He'll come back and eat in a couple days. All right, we need to hurry up and just blast through here. I ain't gonna cast at anything that looks like that anymore. And uh, just see, at least this spot is, oh no, this will get absolutely shit by a south wind. But what won't, you know? <laughs> Feel bad for that guy. That was a good day. Um, really dialed in two different things. Found some good solid fish in areas with bait, not necessarily on the bait balls. Seems like the better quality is just kind of around it in the area adjacent to it. And then found a really good uh, area that has a, a grass line, but out from the grass away is where the, the channel kind of meets those areas. Um, there was some good fish on the standing timber. So we've got a couple things to work with going into tomorrow last day of practice is tomorrow we do have a full day since um we have an off day the day after usually got to be in by one o'clock or something i think we need to dial in more more places like this that uh, have a lot of bait just piled into them tomorrow just places that it's not only safe fish but there's going to be a, an area like this can only handle one or two boats max so you pull into an area and there's a lot of guys that doesn't do you much good and I've seen how these tournaments work. You never want to take a day off or, or take a, some time off because it's so much better to have plans A through Z instead of just having, you know, two things that you really like because shit will change really quick up here. So we're going to head back to the ramp, sleep on it, drink a couple beverages, and uh, see where we want to start tomorrow.
job, man. Oh, not a lot, man. How about yourself? Oh, trying to figure this place out. For sure, man. Yeah, yeah I think it'll like super slow. Really? Good luck, dude. Yeah, holler if you need anything. Welcome out, day number three. Um, just gonna try to expand upon a little bit what we found yesterday, which is finding some, some fish on bait and some of the secondary points on those grass edges where those fish are staged up. They're definitely staging in both different scenarios. And um, I'm just gonna check a bunch of these shorter creeks, see where the fish are at in relation to that bait. But shit, man, look at the side imaging shots on this, uh, on this Hummerbird Apex this morning we're already seeing all these fish this is about the most fish we've seen coleslaw on on bait but check out something like you got this big group of fish right there you got bait everywhere but i started seeing fish like that's fit that's bass that's bass 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 so that's good looking stuff and we're way back in this creek dude we are way back here so just gonna try to find sneaky stuff plus stuff like this ain't gonna get blasted by the wind quite as bad if we uh Got a lot of wind that first out they're calling for. It's bigger ones over there. Dude, this is the best spot we found the whole time. Sleep for six hours and I forgot how to use scope. Catfish. This can't all be catfish though. That's why you gotta fight them, Cole. I could have a damn Feast once again. Don't you guys watch this video and message Lee and tell him we're throwing these catfish back. He will not be fucking happy. It can't all be catfish. There's too many. Catfish. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Three of them right there. Little Tim got it. Little baby one. Cool. Okay, time to leave. Unless it's a catfish. It's fighting weird. I think it's a catfish. drum. Can't be a bass, can it? I thought it was weird he didn't go zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
looks like a bed, but probably isn't. Old beds, maybe. Giant if it's bass. I don't think I got a problem catching it. Those boys are gonna come and go. <laughs> that might be a ten if it's a bass. It's not. It's a catfish, I think. It's spinning or drum. And he gave up. Catfish, gotta be. Drum, wow. It's a big drum. Drum lipping. Wow. It's a good cast, at least, I guess. Oh, bud. That's not him. <laughs> that is a crappie. Got excited for a second. Thought I had the damn Waller Gina of a lifetime, but I just got a fat little bitch ass crappie. She's knocked it. It's not a crappie. It looks exactly like whatever's on that brush pile. You know? Big crappie, maybe, but they look fucking bigger than crappie. It's bass. That was one of his buds. Donk. Got it. It's a good sign. Now let's go with that fucking pile. Just had me in a tree. And it broke because, broke because it fucking had to. Get it. That's cool. Look at that one. First throw with the shaky on a fish. I think things are changing already, or at least on these fish at this moment. Cool. Thought it was about to be bait galore. They don't seem like they're all catfish. They're really acting a little different. It's a bass, it's a good one too. Forgot what that was like. It's a big, big old two and a half pounder. God, it's not a catfish, is it? It's a grass drum. Grass drum, Idaho. He's got a 
prolapsed butthole because I pulled them out of six feet. Whoa. That's a Mr. Bass. Maybe. Nope, it's not. Ugh. There was one bass. I'm gonna take this, my six sense lures, and my Waterland sunglasses. We're gonna blast up and down the lake really fast in the bass cat boat handle those big big waves great the yamaha's gonna have great gas mileage get faster than the rest of it <laughs> that's the one that gamma fluorocarbon ain't gonna break <laughs> is that good that's all you want okay guys that is a wrap on practice and on the media day down here at toledo bend uh didn't go out and fish today had the day off off i guess we had to go take pictures of headshots boat rafts pre-tournament meeting interviews stuff like that uh, and I uh, met the camera guy, did an interview with him that will be in my boat tomorrow. Pretty badass. Brian Evie's going to be in the boat. Zonus camera guy. Awesome on Bass Live. So we get a Bass Live camera tomorrow. Awesome way to kick it off to uh, start the Elite Series career. Maybe. We, we don't know if we're going to be able to go out tomorrow because there could be uh, a wind delay, which would cause a cancellation of tomorrow and just slide everything back. Still will be a four-day tournament. It's all mood at this point because by the time you're watching this, the tournament's over anyway. You'll know what happened. But practice went decent. There was ups and downs for sure. We definitely saw fish kind of transitioning. It seemed like a group of fish definitely wanted to slide up one more stage further, whether that be from the trees in the main creek channel up to the grass edge from the grass edge on that big channel swing deep part up to some of the drains or from some of these stumps in five to 12 feet of water all the way up into you know two, three, four feet of water on some of those stumps. And it looked like they were really pairing up that last day, wanted to do their thing, um, which kind of made the bite really funky too. They didn't really want to cooperate. Regardless, I think the biggest thing will be in this tournament to really get in an area and just put the trolling motor down, see what the fish are doing, see how they're reacting and deal with this wind that's already ripping um, out of the southwest. If I can get down to my area that I want to fish, I feel really good about it. And honestly, I'll probably do everything short of destroying this boat to get down there because, I mean, I do got some stuff actually close to the ramp. It's just not nearly as good to um, for, the, for the potential of a mega bag. I think this tournament's going to take at least 110 pounds. I don't know if it's going to Everyone always asks, you know, what's it going to take to win? What's it going to take to win? Well, is it going to, what's it going to take to win or what's the winning weight going to be? Because to me, that's two different things. I think the winner could have like 115 pounds, but I think second place could have like 103. So technically it took 103 and one ounce to win, right? So I think the winning weight is going to be 110 to 114, but I think you're going to, I think second and third place will fall off a decent amount from that um, down to low 100s. So with that being said, that's 25 pounds a day to get to 100, obviously. I think it's going to take 27 a day or so. Um, that's my target weight, 27 to 28 a day. And I don't think it's going to be a thing where it's like a smallmouth tournament where you weigh like 26.7, 27.1, 26.3 or something like that. It's going to be like 36 pounds one day. 27 the next day 32 and 24 the last day or something like that it's going to really bounce around and really depend on if you get those big quality seven eight pound plus bites that are available out there did see some teeners i think on forward facing that i didn't cast to or get to bite or they wouldn't bite flat out so crazy things are possible and in store at Toledo Bend. So that's my game plan for tomorrow. I got a little, little uh, juggle type rigs with the, with the juggle minnow tied on. I got a lot of jerk baits tied up. I do have some big baits tied up and I can't go anywhere uh, without my hog walla um, on a Carolina rig or without my divine worm on a shaky head or on a free rig or a shaky head. I got both of those rigs tied up too. So I'll link everything I caught them on in practice down below for you guys to check out. And again, thank you so much to everyone that's supporting me, whether it be the companies or you guys watching this video seriously it's it's mind-blowing to have so many of you reaching out wishing me good luck and support along the way might blank tomorrow might break the boat in half might like i talk about never catch a fish again the rest of my life but regardless we're gonna have a hell of a good time and um i i appreciate all your support so much so 
That being said, need to get some sleep, need to get some water in me. Forgot to drink water today, so that was probably smart. Um, or at least I need some beers, because there's water in beer. It'll hydrate me just as well, I would say. I'm not a doctor, but probably. Anyways, I'll catch you soon. I'm out of here. Peace.